Hi and welcome back to DCC EX Labs. Today we're going to cover how to hook DCC++ EX up to Wi-Fi. Here's an Elegoo Mega, same as the Arduino Mega, a Deke Robot Motor Shield, same as the Arduino Motor Shield, and here is a MakerFab's ESP8266 Wi-Fi board. Here you can see on there we've got an ESP8266 chip, there's the antenna, there's a set of jumpers, this has a voltage regulator to provide this with 3.3 volts and it has some circuitry to uh, level shift the transmit and receive pin. If you look on the back, here's their website, uh, but you can find this and similar boards from other suppliers. Now the first thing we got to do is connect things up. So we need to be a little careful because uh, these pins sometimes don't line up the way you would expect them to. So I want to line them up on one side first. So I'll pick the back side here. And then I'll line them up on this side and get one side started, then the other, and it snaps together. Now I'll do the same thing with the Wi-Fi board. Notice there's one direction here. There's notches cut out. See this expanded area here? And the same thing here. Uh, that's so you know which direction the Arduino needs to point, or the boards on the Arduino need to point. So same thing. Let's look here and notice that this needs to fit on the very last pin. You might even want to check to make sure these are straight. Bend them to be straight if they're not. So I'll start on one side. This time I'll start on this thing. Uh, and then make sure it's lined up here. And then gently press it down. There you go. All right. So I've got all three boards stacked up. You're going to notice that I've got two jumper wires here. That's because we're going to jumper the transmit and receive pins here to the transmit and receive pins here on serial one. Now notice there's these rows of pins. There's three rows of pins here. This is the transmit row. This is the receive row. The middle row of pins connect to the pins on the um, Arduino. But we're not going to use that. We're going to take these two jumpers, move them off to the side so they're just hanging in space and not connected to anything. We're going to jumper to transmit one or serial one on the Mega. So if you look, I've got pin 19 here is serial one, receive one. So I'm going to take this blue wire and I'm going to jumper to receive. Now I'm going to take that and jumper it to any of these transmit pins. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the transmit pin, which is pin 18. I'm going to go here, go into the pin if I can get it, and then jumper here to any of the receive pins. So again, I'm going from receive to transmit, and then from transmit to receive on the board. That's all there is to it. Now people have asked, can I use other boards? Well, sure. We've tried this one as well. This is just another carrier board for an ESP8266. This is a little ESP01 chip. If you look here, this just pops off. So this board looks very similar to this one. You just have to separately purchase one of these little ESP01s or O1Ss and stick it on this board. The other thing is you can use these separately. These will wire. If you um, don't mind putting jumper wires from these pins on the back, then you can connect this via jumpers and just leave it sitting somewhere else off of the board. Okay, so let's see what else we've got wired up here. Notice that here I've got 9 volts of power going into the Mega. Right here, I've got these red and black wires supplying 12 volts to the motor shield. My trace pin is cut in case I want to use more than 12 volts. The white and blue wires connected to motor uh, A goes to my main track. The B has red and black wires connected through jumpers, and that connects over here to the program track. Now let's connect the Arduino and load up some software. First thing we're going to do is take a USB serial cable. One end goes to my laptop, the other end goes to the Arduino. So I'll plug this in to the laptop, plug this in to the Arduino. Saw the light flash there if um, it caught it on camera 
for the ESP8266. All right, you'll notice that I've got our website up here. It's at dcc-ex.com. And if we go over here to the download section, I'll click this button, and when it loads, we go to download DCC++ EX. Now you can use our automated installer, and that's certainly one way to do it. But today we're going to cover how to do it manually with the Arduino IDE. So you can get the zip right here, the latest DCC++ EX release. So we'll just click on this, download the file, It'll show up usually in the lower left of your browser, and you're going to open that up in a few minutes and um, install it into the Arduino IDE. Here on this tab, I have the Arduino IDE from their website. Uh, the link will be below. You just say, go here to where it says download the Arduino IDE, pick your operating system, and download and install it on your machine. There's plenty of good tutorials on how to use the Arduino IDE, so we won't cover that here. All right, as you can see, I've uploaded the Arduino IDE software, and that's what this is. We're going to assume that you know how to unzip a file, and you've installed the files from the zip for the DCC++ EX command station into the folder with your other Arduino sketches. Then you can just go into File, Open, and choose the sketch you want. So there's Command Station EX. I've already got it loaded up here, and I've got my serial cable still plugged in and connected to the Arduino. Now here on the Command Station EX.ino file, there are some settings. By default, we're going to use the AP or Access Point mode, where your Command Station acts like a, its own little router. Otherwise, you can actually log in to your network. So if we scroll down here just a little bit to settings, you'll see where I've got this set up and it says router name and my password. This is where you would put the SSID for your router and the password that any of your devices would use to log into the router here. That would allow you to connect to the router and go through the router to find your command station and connect to it. Um, you can actually do both not at the same time, but both are active at the same time, so that you could choose at any point to log into your router and connect, or connect directly to the command station. So we're going to leave all the defaults, because we just want it to connect as an access point. So all you got to do is go to Tools, make sure that your board is set, see that it's found the right COM port or select it, and then you go here to Upload. So we'll click that, and it will compile and upload to the Arduino. So assuming we got no errors and everything went OK and the sketch was uploaded to your Arduino, let's use the serial monitor to see what's going on in your command station. So we'll go to Tools, Serial Monitor, and we want to make sure that we've got the correct baud rate set down here in the lower right and that we select it to say both new line and carriage return. All right, so now if you get some errors here because you chose to not put in your password and your router name, that's fine because it's just going to go through that, fail out, and go default to AP mode. I probably put in my password here, so you're going to see some of the logging. It's going to give me the AT version of my ESP8266, the manufacturer version. This is the AI Thinker technology company. And then we look here, and it's going to give us the IP address. So you can see that my Wi-Fi did go through and I'm using this local IP address if I want to connect to it through my router. But down here further you're going to see here's the AP mode right down here and it's going to list 192.168.4.1 as the access point and that's what I'm going to uh, connect to directly. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is connect engine driver and use the networking of our Wi-Fi board. So we'll go into my network settings. You'll see that there's the AI Thinker board. You may see DCC-EX or a name that you can give it. But that's my access point, and I'm going to connect directly to it. So I check that. I connect. Then I go to engine driver. And if you remember, our IP address was... 192.168.4.1 so that's the access point. I'll click on that. It connected. I will go to select my loco. That's at address 3. Acquire it. 
turn on the power. There we go. With any luck at all, we're off and running. Thanks for watching.